and I'd like to thank all the patriarchal um, cis white men that have been hoarding the toilet paper that are forcing a trans woman to ho hose herself off <laughs> outside after using the washroom. It's not right. Welcome to the Between Two Wheels podcast, where we talk about all things on and between two wheels. I'm your host, Johnny Roblox, and with me today are my lovely co-host, Justin Dirt Bike Rack Bird, and Uncle Coronavirus's Fake News, Ken. This episode is being brought to you by Get Lowered Cycles, your source for all the parts and gear you need for your Harley. Today, we are sharing what 2020 motorcycles we are excited about. And no, they're not Harleys. What? Huh? What's going on, guys? Nothing. I'm I'm a uh, patriarchal cis white man. You're a cis? What does that mean? Cis. cis. A girly man. No. Like a tranny no <laughs> what no, you are wrong <laughs> god i guess all the tranny porn i watch is wrong they always call them sissies <laughs> no no no, no you... <laughs> well hey i'm gonna i'm gonna default to you because you are definitely the expert when it comes to you know sex a, a cis male is a person who was born male and whose gender identity is male so us oh. that's You're... a cis male yes you Yes. It's got to be short for something, right? Sys system. Sys systemical. <laughs> no, it doesn't, doesn't say. Lacking testicle. Wait, no, you'd have your testicles still. You wouldn't be. So, so why don't these call them men? Why do they have to be cis <laughs> men? I don't know. You, you're looking for reason in all the wrong places. <laughs> oh, yeah, especially <laughs> on this topic. <laughs> okay, so let's <laughs> let's dive into this. With the 2020 riding season upon us, well, at least here in South Texas. Sorry, all you northern folks. Um, I'm not. They don't need a visa to get out of there. <laughs> <laughs> His face. <laughs> He's like, oh, shit, okay. Facts. <laughs> uh, but we want to take a deeper look at what motorcycles we're excited to see and hopefully we'll have a chance to ride. Now, each of us chose three bikes and did not share this list with each other so we are all hearing these for the first time right now so let's kick this off now let's let's go over the ground rules has to be 2020 model year motorcycle oh okay that's it i mean so a slingshot no <laughs> Fuck i said motorcycle okay okay i mean i'm, I'm a bad co-host anyways i didn't do it till i got here same, but that's just because my AC went out, and that's what I've been dealing with for the past two days. My dog so. had surgery, so yeah. <laughs> yeah, your dog was in surgery as we were recording last episode. Seven hundred and fifty nine dollars. <laughs> well, my AC was almost ten grand, so I mean, I'll trade you. Yeah. <laughs> Weird flex. <laughs> yeah. Oh, trust me, it was a long <laughs> payment plan. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're not, you're not even getting a new AC unit. No, no, no. They're no. just replacing everything else. Everything but the actual unit. Yeah. yeah. But because so, that part was good. Yeah, that part was great. Yeah. <laughs> Are they just adding additional duct work or larger ducting? So long story short, the house used to have a three ton unit mm -hmm. and the owner previous owner upgraded to a four ton unit and did not change the duct work. Okay. Which we found out our house is actually needs a four ton unit, surprisingly, but of course needs to be changed with the duct work because you're forcing more four tons of air through a smaller. Hole. Yeah. Yeah. Imagine Sometimes no one that's a good pee game. really bad and your pee hole's all tiny. No. You my, bit, oh, well, yeah. Y'all don't know. Never mind. My, my pee hole's <laughs> just fine. Well, yeah, but you had an I extra. Let's say you had an extra. <laughs> 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 I increased my flow rate. <laughs> you put in a splitter. <laughs> <laughs> it's a diverter. Yeah. All, but, all uh, I know is yeah. about the Prince Albert is that when, when it's taken out, that motherfucker closes quick. No, it don't. Yeah. No. Well, I didn't have a fucking oct gauge like you have. <laughs> Mine it's was a two gauge. <laughs> okay, I had a ten, and that bitch closed up. It wasn't pierced with a fucking roofing nail. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Justin, let's start with you. Yeah, um, me. Your three bikes for 2020 that you are stupid excited about. Okay, let's not whoa, fucking whoa, whoa. get crazy here. Let's yeah. all that back, especially <laughs> when you get to me. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so the first bike on my list is the 2020 KTM Freeride EXC, which is uh, an electric freeride dirt bike. 
Uh, so for those of you who don't know what a free ride is, it's kind of a... I know what a free ride is. Your mom gave me one. Hey, oh, all right, good one. Yes. That was quick. Uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, so a free ride is kind of a love child of a enduro bike and a trials bike. So it's not great at either of them, kind of like a dual sport. It sucks on the road and on the dirt. This one is a little bit more usable. Uh, you wouldn't want to do enduros on it. You wouldn't want to do trials bikes on it. But it's kind of that, it's a cool training tool to kind of hone your skills as far as like the technical enduro riding goes uh, without having, you know, a big heavy enduro bike or a very um, specific trials bike. Well, yeah, because looking at, because that, is that it? Is yeah, that's it, okay. it right there. Because, yeah, looking at that, I've, I've seen trials bikes and that's got way too much stuff on it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but like uh, that whole seat thing. <laughs> that yeah. whole seat thing. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, it's it's definitely lacking things that you would want um, on like an enduro. Uh, but it's it's all electric, which as we've talked about before, I think electric dirt bikes are probably the most practical use of electric motorcycles. Okay, let me pause you there because I have a question. Okay, let's say we were looking at an electric dirt bike. Going out to Zars, okay, right? and then like my trail bike. How much longer would either bike last over the other? Like, would I be able like, to like ride mileage wise, like well, riding hours, time? Okay. Right. Well, in my case, like minutes, but <laughs> facts. <laughs> <laughs> um. So, like, you do your races, correct? Would that bike last one race for you? Probably. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Because so it's like whole day. Or your whole, the whole event. It's like an hour and 10 minutes. Is it's, that how it's long? It's a 70 minute race. Yeah. 70 minutes. Yeah. Okay. Hour and 10 seven. minutes. Okay. But even knowing, well, cause you're not going all out the entire time. You have to actually go and deal with obstacles and shit. Correct. Bottlenecks where you're sitting there. Yeah. Well, those, that was during those, practice. Yeah. Those now. don't happen during the race as much. Oh, okay. Yeah. Most of those happen. It does happen in the race sometimes, but not nearly as bad as it does in okay. practice. Your race video, the one where it showed the well it didn't show it but it happened where the dirt bike decided to become part of you yeah yeah it tried to what what day was that was that wednesday or thursday's episode it would have been thursday's yeah okay so go and watch thursday uh march 12th go watch that video on bike and birds channel because you can watch me shit well there's that but you had trouble twice <laughs> that you had to stop and even my dad was watching three times really was it three yeah okay so i had the two bike problems and the crash okay and the crash oh, okay. happened during the race correct did you notice how many people stopped racing to check on him oh, oh yeah. every single person i had to tell people i'm good don't yeah, ruin going. your race <laughs> going yeah yeah I saw that, that that right there is a wonderful example of the community in which we all belong to. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, because that, that's, that's the motorcycle community. Because no one wants to lose or increase right. their time. But in this that is instance. a points race, right? Yeah. People stopped to check on someone. To, 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 to you know, build on that point, their the previous race, you can see it in the video. I, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, it was in the video. I passed somebody on one of the open areas. There was a rider down with a rider stopped with him that rider ended up dnfing because he stayed with that rider and they yeah. were like second or third when he went down and it was a points race yeah that, that just shows the people yeah it's crazy well it's a different world people have you know they show their humanity yeah you really get you, you really get a, a sense of okay people aren't that shitty when <laughs> but in nascar <laughs> though rubbin's racing yeah, yeah yeah fuck it i mean, I mean rubbin's still racing i mean people well, yeah, you, you know go down but, but yeah but stopping a points race and losing and losing yeah to make sure your competitor was okay yeah, yeah. making sure that another portion in that video where a buddy of yours now it's a friend but mm -hmm. it's a competitor of yours loans you a battery so you can actually race yeah he let me dissect his bike <laughs> like but but motorcycle riders are all a bunch of punk fucking assholes yeah yeah what's even crazier is the guy that let me let me his battery 
didn't even make me take it over to Helotus. He had someone else come and pick it up from me <laughs> to take it back to Helotus. <laughs> For those of you who don't know, Helotus is on the other side of town from where I live. So, it, uh, I'm I'm sorry what's, for what's interrupting also, on you. No, no, no. But, but it's just we always see all the negative shit about bikers and motorcyclists in general. Yeah. Well, it's a stereotype that started 50 years ago. Yeah. Or longer, right? Yeah. So, I mean, back in really the 40s. I, I just feel that there needs to be some type of, like, happy... Like a you, PSA. <laughs> well, like a happy biker right. YouTube channel that the media can just go to and say, oh, look, bikers are good people. Let's not... Yeah. Let's, let's stop focusing on oh, this one's an asshole, and focus on, oh, this motorcycle club raised $100,000 for Toys for Tots. Yeah. Or they had 4 million fucking stuffed animals to give away to children. But oh, the, problem, like, the problem is people are shitty, and that's what rises to the top. Like, oh, yeah, that's, for what example, that's, that's, that's take, what's sensational. You take a video of, say, for example, a local bike club raising $100,000 for a children's hospital. It's going to get like 240 views. Yeah. I have a guy on a, a motorcycle... Doing 180. Slightly and get, like, moved into his lane, and he punches the mirror out and takes off running 2 million views. Yeah. Like, <laughs> well, it's like Uncle Mullet. He lives up near Bulverde. Oh, dude. Great channel. And so, yeah, Uncle Mullet, he's another YouTuber. Well, I mean, yeah, he's a YouTuber. He's a YouTuber, he's a YouTuber, yeah. YouTuber yeah. Uh, but, like, he, he hosted a ride, I was two, three, four weeks ago, where the the purpose of the ride was, of course, everyone wants to meet him. He's a I'd love to meet the guy. He seems super friendly, super nice. But the ride was for, there's a, they have a community box in one of the neighborhoods he lives in. So you can bring an item or take an item if you need it. Mm, okay. So, you know, his thing was bring an item for the community box and we'll fill go on the this box. ride. Yeah, exactly. Another, another type of fill the box thing. So he's like, bring cat food, bring dog food, bring canned food, you know, whatever to put it in the box. So that... You know, the community, if anybody happens to need a can of cat food, then they can get it Mm -hmm. and not have to pay for it. And, yeah, he had, like, I think he had, like, uh, 50 people show up. You know, part of it was that it was, uh, a lot of it was a dirt road. Okay. And, of course, he's in in Bulverde, so it's not exactly centrally located anywhere, really. Yeah. It's, what, an hour from here? About, yeah. Yeah. But one one more point I want to make before we get back to the actual bikes is... So I'm I'm pretty mechanically inclined, and most people know that. I know I break bolts and shit like that, but I can still get stuff done. When I pulled in the pits and I said, like, my bike's not working, I took off my seat, and the problem was diagnosed without me touching the bike again. From two people I had just met that day and a guy I had met maybe two times before that. They broke out, you know, multimeters and were taking apart wires and plugging it here and plugging it there. They had the problem diagnosed while they were also needing to get ready, get ready for, for the, the race. race. Yeah. <laughs> when we put the bike on the charger, we had probably about 10 minutes until the race started. And they spent all that time that they should have been, you know, hydrating and relaxing and getting whatever they needed to get fixed on their bikes, helping me get my bike back up and running. Well, they got to, you know, it's one of those things and people talk about it. You got to build up your karma. Yeah. yeah. I mean, so they helped you and then who knows a year from now, if you're still doing this, you know, I'll pay it forward. Yeah. You, you could help them out for sure. You know, and what's crazy is if my buddy would not have lent me that battery, I would have posted on our, our racing, uh, Facebook group. And I guarantee you, I would have had a battery for that next day. Oh, yeah. guarantee it. Oh yeah. Cause they're, I mean, they're pretty universal. So but anyways, back to the bikes. Yeah. Back. Sorry for disrailing us. No, I don't, I'll talk about dirt bikes all day long. Uh, so this bike, what I like about, this particular bike is that it comes with the lithium ion KTM power pack, which you can buy extra of, and it is easily removable. So if you are going on a, you know, three day weekend trip and you don't want to bring a generator, you can bring extra power packs and swap them out. Kind of oh, like, okay. Kind of okay. like the stay six. It's a little bit more, you know, involved in the stay six, but instead of, you know, filling your gas tank, you can just swap out your battery. Yeah. And along with that, uh, it's it's got a pretty powerful engine. It's uh, equivalent to a 250 motocross bike. So I mean, it's got nice. It's got power. It also has different riding modes. Of course, it being electric, it's one press of a button and you're in different mode. 
Uh, it's a lot lighter than something of this size in a internal combustion uh, type scenario. And I think it's just, uh, I think they're kind of leading the pack as far as um, the electric dirt bikes. Of course, KTM being a very reputable off-road brand and they're still kind of in the same price range. I can't find an exact price on it, but I know when I looked at it at, I believe it was IMS actually, they were a little bit more expensive than the internal combustion, but they were, I mean, they were right there. They're right there with it. I'm really liking the electric uh, pit bikes. Oh yeah, for sure. I, I low key kind of want one of those. <laughs> the, uh, K, um, actually it's Husqvarna. Actually, I think KTM makes one too. But Husqvarna has a, a, a 65cc equivalent um, little mini bike. Yeah. And you see quite a few kids out there racing those at the series that I do, which to me, I'm like, you're already implanting in their head that you can race and ride an electric dirt bike. Oh, yeah. So I think they're going to be a lot more um, adapt to that kind of technology than some of the older people. One thing I think is cool is it's KTM. So you know you're gonna get quality. Yeah. And what what was the price tag on this again? I'm, I'm having a hard time finding it. I I want to say it was like in the 11 to 13 range, which sounds expensive, but that's that's KTM. I mean, it's KTM and it's an electric bike. And that, it's you're paying an import tax on that, there. That gets so. that starts getting expensive with yeah. the electronics that are all involved with but controlling the, all that. So I saw somewhere. Uh, and this was more geared towards the automotive side of things, but actually, I take that back. It's eighty three hundred dollars, so it is spot on. That's pretty fair. The uh, two fifty range. Okay, I like, I like that price. Yeah, it's spot on the two fifty so range. They were saying that <laughs> electric cars are dollar for dollar cheaper to maintain than you know petrol powered vehicles. Oh, absolutely. So I'm I'm thinking about that perspective when it comes to bikes. Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, if especially you, on a dirt bike, where you're putting this thing through its paces, you probably don't have to worry about that motor throwing a rod or anything like that because there isn't a rod. Yeah, and I think a lot of the obstacles that maybe gas-powered engines would have a problem with this one won't because of that instant torque. I mean, the only problem that I've seen that I've heard, I haven't seen it. I've heard, I mean, of course this happens with any batteries is temperature. Mm -hmm. See, this is actually liquid cooled. See, and you know, that's something you don't even think about is having a liquid cooled electric engine. Yep. That's one of their, their selling features is is liquid cooled, put down a maximum of 30 horsepower and you get a full charge in one and a half hours. Oh shit! So you oh, can actually on a fast charger. Oh, so on standard, I think it's I think it's closer to three hours. Well, you could get a generator that can handle two twenty. Yep, and Absolutely. just run. Actually, your, most generators put out two twenty, which they? which of course is kind of ironic. You know, it I, is. I need my gas engine to charge my electric vehicle. It is, <laughs> but you're running you're running it for three hours and getting you know four hours, five hours of riding out of it. So you're yeah. still. Or run the 220 and run a quick charge on it. An hour and a half. And an hour and a half. So you were able to do that in the pits between races, I would imagine. Mm, mm. Depends on the race. Well, you series. wouldn't need a full charge. So, yeah. Because pr- pract- even if you did, like, all of practice, which most people don't, you'd still be able to get back and get a full charge in mm-hmm. that time. For sure. Okay. I could just start my truck and plug it into my truck. You have a 220 on your truck? No, we have the 120. We have one, yeah. Or 110. Yeah. 110, yeah. So let's let Ken go next so I'm not just talking for the first <laughs> okay. third of the I episode. Only. I don't want people to skip through it, you know. So Ken? <laughs> so, you know, I'm, I'm a bad co-host and didn't even look at the show notes. <laughs> I mean, we talked about it. but <laughs> Which cool. is funny because Roblox actually put these out, like, way in advance. <laughs> yeah. He didn't put this one up until... Well, I put up the night. information put about the information. this one on Tuesday, I yeah. think. But I go back to look at the show notes because I forget shit. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> so for one of mine, uh, I went. I really kind of like the the new uh, Yamaha VMAX. Because you're a dick. I totally chose that one too. Did you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, Well, then there we go. 
Yeah, the new Yamaha V Max. Huh. Looks like the Harley Street Fighter. <laughs> <laughs> or the Harley Street Fighter looks like the Yamaha yeah, V Max. Yeah, yeah. That, that's what I. So it was a joke. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, it looks like a great bike, and the numbers. You know that motor looks cool, doesn't it? I really almost, like that. Almost kind of steampunkish, futuristic type. It looks over the top. <laughs> 170 horsepower. Holy shit. Yeah. 170 horsepower. Uh, 1679 cc uh, V4 engine. Oh, I bet that thing sounds awesome. Oh, yeah. 170 horsepower. And uh, it's there. of course, you know, it's what you can find online. 100 pounds of torque. Jeez. Those numbers don't add up, though. Well, it, it, okay. and, and of course, this is just it, what. It, well, it's all dependent on RPM. What was the horsepower number? 170. 170. And a hundred uh, foot pounds of torque. I believe it. It just seems out of like that configuration. Yeah, but it looks definitely high RPM. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. They they call the paint matte raven black. Okay, it's black. It's it's, it's, <laughs> it's matte black. It's matte black. <laughs> yeah, but uh, no. I mean, okay, it's kind of pricey. I mean, well, it is pricey. It comes in at seventeen nine nine nine. All right, but it's got a seventeen hundred cc engine. Uh, it's liquid cooled. You know, so for a lot of people, that's becoming more and more of an important thing. Yeah. I mean, especially if you're in any well, city. In, in this type of motor, though, you don't have a choice. You have to liquid yeah. cool it. It's a high performance engine. Yeah, exactly. And uh, yes, that is a dig at Harley. Harleys are not <laughs> high performing motors, they're purpose built. Okay. Uh, it's got a hydraulic clutch, five speed transmission, which I think is kind of weird. That is weird. Okay, so. But it's Since a shaft driven. It uh, is. So that's where you're getting. That lost me. Really? I hate shaft driven bikes. But you're getting instantaneous. You're not losing any power there. Yeah, but well, it, it, you're, they just, they ride so weird. Instead of 20% power loss through the motor train, you're really only going to be losing about 10 with the shaft. Yeah, you, you lose so much but, less power. But if you are not used to riding a shaft-driven motorcycle, this will be a unique experience. See, and I rode, I rode the, the a Moto Guzzi, and, and I just... I didn't notice any... Difference? Real difference. I mean, it's just another motorcycle. You feel it when you twist that throttle. I mean, maybe so. So... Something on here. Now, you talked about the price of 18000 Now, I actually chose this bike, too. So, I have my notes up here on the screen now for y'all. I I looked at comparable bikes. And the pricing is actually low compared to other power cruisers. So, the other bikes that would be the competitors for this is the XD of All, the Rocket 3, the FXDR, the Fat Bob 114, even. And they're all relatively in that same price point. Other bikes, each one of those competitors, you're getting something different. But if you look at that, your range is 18K to 21K, a $1,500 median. I don't see that being too off the mark. No, no, no. I was, my thinking was more along the lines of. It's, it's a Yamaha that's eighteen thousand dollars. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, kind of, kind of, but it's definitely not like a, a beginner's bike. You know, someone's oh, not yeah. going to go jump out and just buy this bike. No, typically speaking. Uh, but it's it looks. I really I chose it mainly because of its looks. It looks great. I it, love the way the engine looks. I like how the, everything is blacked out. I mean, the only thing they didn't <laughs> except the for the rotors. You, the, yeah, you, the only <laughs> thing you can't black out is your rotors. You know, I I, I do like the. Um, the exhaust on this bike is actually split one, you know, so I think it's the rear cylinder goes out or the rear cylinders go out uh, the left side, the front cylinders go out the right side, but then they split one more time at the mufflers and it becomes a quad exhaust. Yeah. And I like the intake as well. Oh, the intake looks mean. Yeah, I don't like the intake. It, it fits though. I think it fits with this particular bike and the way they have it styled. So they did a good job of styling the bike with everything that they yeah. have on it. So the intake reminds me a lot of the Buell, what was that, 1125R or something like that? Oh, I don't know. It was their their only really good Buell motorcycle. Uh, and then they shuttered Buell like two years after they 
released it. But that intake, everyone hated it on the Buell. But then everyone, like, it's so ugly, it's awesome. <laughs> it's it, kind of like the FXDR and it's, in, you know, gigantic yeah. intake. So it's it's unique, but it really isn't. But you don't see that on all the other cruisers. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad they went, you know, with a sh- shortened exhaust like that. They didn't, you know, try and sweep up. I mean, it's a cruiser. It's what it is. See, I the reason I really like this bike, too, is because I think the Harley Davidson Bronx will be able to use this as the litmus test. Yeah, maybe so. I mean, it's a good looking bike, but also, and my major con on the bike was the five speed transmission. However, it's shaft driven. So the gearing may be different. It's got, it's got to have different gears. So it's got to have some pretty tall gears because if not, you're just going to be screaming for a six gear and then you're in the Sportster 883, well, the Sportster situation. Yeah. Yeah. But so uh, that was the, yeah, that was really my only thing that kind of, eh, kind of took me out of it a little bit Mm -hmm. but everything else it just looks like a great bike it's got great stats like i said just that five-speed transmission haven't ridden it haven't seen anybody ride it no so i mean don't like you said unless it's got really tall gears so that you're not winding out on fifth gear you know on the highway every time yeah you're not at 10 grand doing 70 i also really don't like the headlight especially from yamaha having some of the coolest headlights yeah i think if you strap like the mt10 headlight on there oof off but see they're just they're making it different yeah but i like uh. it's <coughs> it's a cruiser with an attitude <laughs> yeah actually yeah it's like that weird fat kid back in high school that could run like a 4 240 <laughs> 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 y- y'all all had one of those kids you, you right? don't expect them to move fast exactly like, oh, oh shit he can yeah. move <laughs> you don't okay. realize it, but that's me <laughs> So, do I see a foot race coming up? (laughs) Not with me. (laughs) I know my limitations. That damn coronavirus got me. (laughs) All right. So, since Ken and I both had the same on that one, let's go ahead and go back to you, Justin. Okay. And then I'll go on to the next one. Perfect. Okay. So, my second bike is the Husqvarna Wittbellin 701. Bless you. I I think that's how you, you say it. Um, moving from KTM to KTM's pretty white sister. <laughs> <laughs> so this bike has, not only does it look really good, and I've also seen this one in person, one of the best looking bikes, nearly, production bikes. I nearly picked this one. That I've seen in a hot minute. So this is one of those that... I think we all ended up on the same page with the same bikes <laughs> on it. No, I was just thinking back. The only thing I... I had to look up was my third one but the first two i've seen at dealerships i thought were pretty cool but so this bike is a four stroke single cylinder single overhead cam okay it is liquid cooled fly by wire so here's where things get weird on this bike okay it's of course 700 cc's or thereabout 75 horsepower 52 foot pounds of torque a little on the lower side right mm-hmm. not screaming numbers no not screaming numbers but Dry weight, 346 pounds. Holy shit. <laughs> 346 pounds with a three-gallon tank. Wow. Sorry, a 3.1-gallon tank. So is this... That makes you think twice, right? Yeah, I mean, the the, the 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 V-Star we just looked at, or, yeah. Yamaha. Uh, V-Max. V-Max, thank you. Uh, it had... It, it came in at like 680 pounds or something like that. Wow. Okay. So we're talking about... Half the weight, about, thereabout. Has a hydraulic clutch, six-speed transmission. Pretty pretty impressive. The best part, $8,000. What? $8,000 for that bike. See, there looks... That's a surprising price. For a 70-horsepower, 400-pound bike. Well, and, and you know that, and look at the styling. It's so sexy. And this isn't one of those, like, it just looks good in pictures. Honestly, this is my least favorite color option that they I have. I like it. They have, like, a white where, where this is white. It's kind of outlined in a highlighter yellow. So the, t- so the tank is white? Correct. It's the one I sent the, the picture of. Oh, okay. From the dealership. 
literally one of the not fake ass carbon fiber. No, that's real. That's acropulvish. <laughs> that's got to be real. I'm trying to find a picture of it. Okay, I like that blue. There it is. I couldn't get it onto the the screen. Okay, yeah, that one looks good. It's all flat too, so it's flat white, flat gray with the the highlighter yellow. I like that. Yeah. I like. I really dig that blue though. It probably looks better in person that blue. Yeah, I just don't like blue in general. So that's kind of kind of a teal. Yeah. So this this looks like a. It, it looks, looks like, like a, a cafe modern, racer. Okay, and a okay. Bike. So you said it. I didn't want to get my balls chopped. No, off. No, it's a modern styling cafe racer. Is what that it is, is it a looks cafe good. racer? I would stuff my ass onto. Yeah, yeah. And this seat is like suede, and these tires are like sport bike tires. So you have sport bike tires with spoked wheels and that chop fender and a suede seat and a futuristic LED headlight. It's really fucking. Cool. I wonder. So is I wonder if the tail light's integrated up here in the tail or if it's down here. That I don't remember. I'm not seeing a 360 capability. Is there a view? It looks like it's integrated in that picture, in this one right, right, right there. It looks integrated from that. And it looks like it has a direct bolt-on for the license plate as well. <laughs> for oh, if you want to get, see that. If you want to get rid of that ugly well, ass. Because they have to have a fender. Mandatory fender. Yeah. It has to come with a fender. I, I'm i telling you, I you... Did I just give you your, your fun bike? <laughs> I no, know a dealership I, that has some. <laughs> I, there was, I still have to go with a street bob. All right, scroll. Yes, it's definitely integrated. Yeah, it's up here. Yeah. Oh, the God. only light down here is for the license plate and, and your turn, turn, turn signals. signals. But you know you That's can get it all put in right there. For, yeah. Oh, yeah, you know someone. Pro- well, it's uh, that's just it. Here in the States, Husqvarna is not a is a not really a big street bike no. company. They're known for their dirt over here. And their lawnmowers. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> I really want one of their lawnmowers. They're really good. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I, I'm going to tell you, I think you chose the sexiest bike. And it's got WP suspension, which is up there. It's a very well-known suspension brand. It's got a 160 17 rear tire. It's a pretty big tire. It's with a 120 front. Okay, I get it. It's a sport bike tire, but still, I want to know what the uh, the max speed is. License plate holder support. Okay. Oh yeah, that. I mean, that right there is your. That's there's your, the connector. Your your add on. Yeah. So that would definitely. Hold <laughs> on. I th- I had a page that had all the specs. Let me see if it has max speed on there. No, that's that looks so sexy. I I know. You can get, scroll, go back up to the seat a little more. Oh, I thought it said you could personalize your seat, like get your fucking name in there or something. Switchable ABS. Switchable ABS. Switchable huh? ABS. And Look at that gauge. That is such a unique looking gauge. Yeah, and that whole center is an LCD screen. No shit. Yep. Man, that's a good looking bike. The, the simplistic. All LEDs all around. You throw some bar in mirrors on that thing. Yeah. Yep. Oh, for sure. And they they made it to where you could. Mm-hmm. Yep. Not quite clip ons, but almost for Just all about, intents and purposes. Yeah. They that's essentially clip-ons. are. Yeah, because it's it's mounted to the triple tree. Yeah. I mean that's part of the triple tree top clamp. Yeah. It's oh. not a traditional. Wait, is clip-ons. that adjustable sus- front suspension? Yes. Um. Yeah. All the WP suspension is adjustable. Wow. Okay, so... Max speed around 115 miles per hour. Okay, so actually right it's, there it's with... Terrible. Decent. Yeah. That's still enough power to get me fucking in trouble. Yeah. Look, LEDs in the headlight, LED turn signals. I like the headlight. Okay, I'm going to say it. This is a sexy bike, and I'll, I kind of just like... I already got tons of accessories with it. And it's... it's oh, there's your bar and mirrors. mirrors. Yeah. And it's proportionately sized too. A so heated grip kit has your handlebar muffs. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <Damn> dirty bikers. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. So I'm gonna. Oh, there's your. Oh yeah, look at that. Indicator. There they LED are. The indicator kit. Oh yeah. So you it's can completely get rid of that the fender. <laughs> wow. That's what's up. Or, you know, if someone has this see, bike. Like, when it has a person on it, like, it's not a tiny bike. Like, it's it's properly proportioned. So, whoever, whichever of our group gets this bike 
and they're riding in front of Justin, they could take all that shit off the back, but leave that fender and sit and just put a sign that says don't boop. Yeah, yeah. you could for sure. Please. That'd be accurate. Please. <laughs> and Justin's in behind me. Oh, I better put that, that quick plate on there. <laughs> okay. Okay. So the Husqvarna. That's a sexy bike. Definitely a winner. Hold on. I got to read this quote from uh, Top Speed Magazine regarding this bike. It says, it's got that funky contemporary style and race-tastic vibe. <laughs> race-tastic. <laughs> I like that word. I feel like you said that with jazz hands. Race-tastic. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I'll take the next one. I chose the 2020 KTM 1290 Super Duke R. R matey. R. <laughs> I nearly picked this one, but I'm really tired of the super nukes. <laughs> <laughs> Just, I mean, I, for like the last year, year and a half, everyone's been fanboying over them. I, I great bikes. I mean, they are. I mean, <laughs> it's just, it's just one of those things. Like, it's, I, yeah. I love it. It's great. I, you know, I'd have it's one like, myself, but I'm tired of it. <laughs> yeah. So it's got a 1301 cc motor, six speed, quick shift transmission. A claimed, so its engine horsepower is 180 with a dry weight of 417 pounds. Again, this is claimed. The design type is a naked sport. Extras has multiple ride modes, cornering ABS, traction, and wheelie control, fully adjustable pegs, shifter, and brake. Price tag, 18K. I've always loved this bike. I, I It's a great looking bike. I, it while looks, I was in the dealership, they sold two of these things. It looks so <laughs> fucking mean. And and honestly, this is right there with the VMAX, right there with the Street Fighter. It's priced around the same. So we were kind of debating what the price tag would look like on the Bronx. I think we know. It's going to be in the 18 it's to 21 be 18. range. It's 18 gotta to be. 21, yeah. Or that's 18 to 21,000, not years of age. But I I like naked bikes. I, I don't look right on sport bikes, but I still I just love looking at them. I love that exposed frame. I love the KTM orange. I, I love always the, will. The orange frame is always catches my eye. And then the actual just the bike itself looks good. It looks like a pissed off hunchback praying mantis. I was gonna, I was gonna say Hornet, but yeah, Praying Mantis actually fits better. <laughs> <laughs> but it's just, and I can tell you that the Brembos that they use on these bikes, they're fucking amazing, superior. <laughs> Br- Brembos is what sent me over the bar. So nice, yeah. KTM knows how to how to build brakes for sure, or <laughs> pick a company that knows how to build brakes. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, it, it's a gorgeous bike, plain simple, and that's that too. It is a simple bike. You don't have a bunch of bullshit on there you don't need. And it's it's a proven performer. Oh yeah, for sure. So I again the price tag kills me. That's yeah, I'd have to go probably five, six years old to get one of these for a fun bike. But now that I sing the Husqvarna, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that price tag's brand new. We man. could be a cafe crew. <laughs> But have non... No, that's what they're going to call us. <laughs> yep, can't buy one now. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, so for me, I'm, I I will get on one of these bikes this year. Not going to oh, buy yeah. one. I'm going to test ride one. Oh, I'm all about test riding. Yeah, see when they're having a KTM Husqvarna on a demo day. Oh, that'd be awesome. Yeah. We'd have to go to Austin. Probably. It's okay. I know those guys. I can get us premium. Nice. Premium access. See? You need to continue to grow your shit so we can ride them <laughs> long coattails. <laughs> Damn. You need to keep working so we can make benefits off of it. Yeah. Yes. That's how it works, right? <laughs> okay, Ken, your turn with your second. So let's go with the uh, the Kawasaki. Okay. Which one? The, the, the Ninja ZX25R. I've never even heard of this bike. It's new. It's coming out. Okay. Okay, so there's not a whole lot of information on it. It's a 250cc, air quote, super bike. Okay. So it comes with some extra features that you normally don't get on your standard, like, 300s. Uh, Let me pull it up here on my little cheat sheet. 
16 valves. My God. Okay. okay, I see. A 250cc motor that's also a four-cylinder. How big are those pistons like that? It, it, um, it About. It redlines at 17,000 RPM. Fuck. <laughs> and they're saying it produces like 60 horsepower, which of course we know in sport bikes it's a whole different yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. you know, metric that they different use game. for that. But the big thing that comes with this one is That's cool, you're getting, man. if you scroll up just a little bit right there, uh, front. Uh, it's like track got, built. Yeah, electronic countermeasures in the form of traction control, quick shifter, and power modes. And you get the upgraded suspension. And the upgraded suspension. Linked rear suspension. All that. In a 250 cc motorcycle that is redlining at 17,000 RPM. That begs, I want to learn how to ride sport bikes on the track. Yeah, that would actually be a perfect, perfect beginner bike track for bike. track racing. Yeah, I mean, you know, you look at some of the features that comes with like the traction control. That's a big thing nowadays. Of course, uh, the quick shifter. That can be an expensive upgrade. Yeah, uh, which quick shifting is great. You know, I recently, I, I, I learned about that from uh, Motonocity. Oh, yeah. When he put his on. Uh, and, of course, the power modes. You can put them on the on the Harleys with uh, the, the power vision. <laughs> <laughs> How cool would that fucking be? <laughs> that would be Hell fucking yeah. great. You know, and, yeah, it's, you know, if you look at it, it's really just another typical Ninja. You know, the, they got the Kawasaki Green. If you look at it, you probably wouldn't notice right away. Yeah. But the features that are inside it, of course, is what make it so great. Yeah, like at first glance, it just looks like a regular Ninja. But having those extra, like I said, it's it's like a track built bike, really. Yeah. But with 250 cc, so you're not going to kill yourself as fast. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> as easily. <laughs> so, are they bringing this to the states? So it, it's planned. Okay. They're they're rolling it out in like it says there Indonesia, and whatnot, uh, India. It's yeah. already launching in India. Oh god, they're gonna sell like hotcakes over there. Yeah, oh, yeah. two fifty cc is the sweet spot for India. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, I tried to find a price, couldn't find one. You know, so I'm sure it's competitively priced with their other models. Uh, maybe a little more just because of the features that it has. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I mean. Y- y- it's not a bad deal. I mean, the size of the motor for the technology that you're getting, and if it can push itself more like the super sport bikes, then you're going to have a huge market for people like that. And like I said, first thing you said, I want to get that on a track. Yeah. So, yeah, that was my second pick. Because at first I saw it, and I was like, oh, great, another Ninja. <laughs> and then I was like, ZX-25. Like I was like... <laughs> I was like, okay, let, let me look at it. When you first said 25R, I was thinking it was like a 2500. You know, 2500 CC. That's what, what, that's what I thought. I was Ninja, thinking they're, they're trying which, to kill their freaking ZX14, and I'm like, that's Z- a big fucking ZX25. <laughs> 14 to 25. Like, I need to look at this. Like, what the hell? Like, I see you, Triumph. <laughs> <laughs> right? Coming after you. But yeah, I mean, you know, for, for a 250 CC bike, and it comes with those accessories. I mean, those that technology, the traction control, the power modes. I mean, that's it's that's cool. a, that's a big grab for people. Okay, so we we say it's good for that getting prepared for track riding. Cool, but how do you think you would do on the streets? I'm sure it does just fine. Just kind of. What about Miss Bird's? So 300. I never wrote. Well, I take that back. I did ride a 250 street bike, but I it was only in random parking lot. It was for my uh, motorcycle test. Ah. Um, but riding um, Miss Birds out on the street, it it was fine. Yeah. I mean, it's it has a little bit of get up and go. Uh, probably comparable to like a Sportster. Okay. Um, of course, different power band and things like that. But I mean, it could do highways. It was it would be the perfect like. Uh, commuter bike for mm-hmm. like a college kid or something like that because it's stupid light you can park it fucking anywhere and they're cheap and they're super cheap maintenance on it is, is nothing I think they've got like I want to say it was like 11 to 15 thousand mile service intervals like oh, wow. they were way up there I could be wrong I'm mean, sure impressive. someone will f- factor in, but they were they're way over the, the Harley 5k's 
because I I asked him when he last time he changed his uh, his oil was he goes oh I haven't changed it I was like what the hell dude and he's like no it doesn't need it until you know X miles I think the first one was at seventy five hundred okay and then I think it goes up to I think the next one after that's like eighteen thousand or something like that but they were very high intervals so it's cheap cost of ownership mm-hmm. um, but yeah if this has any, if this is tuned a little bit higher because it is lacking the CCs to to get you that comfortable highway speed I think this would be a great bike for the street so the Ninja hmm. three hundred with ABS was fifty two ninety nine. Yeah. Brand new. So, I mean. Probably a comparable price on this yeah, one. Yeah, right around the same price. Because, yes, I it imagine. has a smaller motor, but it comes with more technology and more features. More features, yeah. 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 Okay. I mean, even the, even like the, the Ninja 400 with ABS is fifty four ninety nine. All right. So, Justin, let's move over to you for your final pick. Okay, so since I was so budget friendly on the first two, I wanted to get a little stupid. Oh, we were looking on the at last prices. One. <laughs> he was just <laughs> just by happenstance. I didn't I didn't do it on purpose. But uh, so my last bike is the Inner Jika. I might be pronouncing that wrong. Uh, Eva Rebelle. So Inner Jika. I'm just gonna say it like that because yeah. fuck, I don't know if I'm doing it right. Uh, it's an Italian company, and this is a fully electric naked speed bike the front end looks very mt 10 ish yep. the middle looks ducati s yeah <laughs> yep really good looking bike and it's got some impressive stats uh, 145 horsepower 159 foot pounds of torque uh, top speed limited at 125 miles per hour and i want to say the range is uh 250 miles um trying to see the charging time on it because that's you know that's important it's important uh it's the only naked street bike with dc fast charge filling up with over five miles urban range for every minute spent dc charging faster by at least 82 percent than any other electric bike damn Hmm. Uh, okay so break it to us how much Hold on. I, I got a couple more features. Oh, okay. I, I got okay. okay. So it's got four riding modes, urban, eco, rain, and sport. Uh, four regenerative maps, so kind of like the engine braking, uh, low, medium, high, and off. Now, I didn't get an answer for this, but it says it has park assistance, what? back and forth, 1.74 mile per hour max speed. Okay. Okay. Oh, so, so it helps you walk. Yeah. Yeah, that's exactly what it's doing. Oh, it can go backwards. Yeah, so it has a reverse gear, or it probably has a secondary drive gear that if you need to pull it up. Yeah, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't need to be secondary. Electrics can run just as fast in reverse as they can forward. Yeah. That's fucking and, true. And, and that's just a switch. That is fucking cool. Okay. All right. Because that's just a polarity switch. Yep. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, the, the walking backwards, that'd be, I mean depending on where you parked, how tall you are. Yeah, that'd be pretty cool. Oh, okay, here's the charging. Uh, DC fast charge, uh, 250 miles in 40 minutes. Fuck. Okay. Slow charge, mode two or three, 42, I'm sorry, 42 miles per hour. Okay. okay. So so it'd what? be about four two. and a half hours to get a full charge. On yeah. it. What's the range on it again? 250. 250. Oh, damn. Yeah. Uh, let's see. What else? Well, four hours would put you at 160. 40, how many miles per hour? 40, 42. 42. Okay, yeah. So five, five and a half, six hours. Six hours. Yeah. Okay, so it has uh, six levels of intervening trash control as well as switchable ABS. It also has built-in cruise control. Hey, fine. Yeah. That's impressive on a little sport bike. Has a 4.3 inch touchscreen color display that uh, is capable of 16.7 million colors. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so it's customizable. Gotcha. Uh, it also has the possibility to view the closest charging stations when connected to the app. That's good. That's pretty cool. Now, hold on, hold on. Is hold it on. a universal charger? Like, can it. Can you pull up to a, uh, a... I would assume so. I'm they're, guessing they're that getting pretty the regulated sm- with that. That would okay. be the smartest thing to do. Yeah. Well, I heard Ford's not doing it. Well, Ford's assholes. Ford's starting their own. That's why. They they dumped like five point something billion dollars into the infrastructure. Yeah, because that's... No kidding. That's, you know, not fucking stupid. Yeah. I was trying to find the weight. All I could find was the seat height, 31.1 inches. Uh, what, 400 pounds? 
I, I would assume around that range, maybe I a mean, little bit heavier. Typical sport bike. It's also got push button start, which is kind of cool. <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't know it's on. I mean, mine's push button start. <laughs> is it? Oh, well. <laughs> Damn, that was stupid. <laughs> My fat bobs push button and wiggle, so <laughs> and wiggle. You got to yeah. wiggle the wires too. Wiggle the wires. Oh yeah. yeah, it's that wiggle push. So uh, it comes in two colors: uh, Rosso Corsa, which is the red, and Stealth Gray. Yeah, Stealth like Gray the with stealth the, gray. the red frame. Oh, I don't know. That red and black looks good too. Especially with those Olin. Mm-hmm. In, are they Olins or are they Olin inspired? Mm, no, I think they're. I don't think they're Olin. I think they're the other gold brand. Are they race tech, maybe? I don't know. No, Legends has some gold shocks. That's true, yeah. So, probably, I, also like, not I also like the fact that the handlebar is color matched to the fork. Yeah. It looks good. It's, it's a good little, it's that also extra that suede seat detail. Mm-hmm. That's good. But look at look how that seat is done. God, that is such a cool little little tailbone seat. support there. I like it. Yeah, I do like the, how the handlebars match the forks. That is pretty cool. I also like how the the tail the the tail lights integrated, and you can just unbolt that and bolt that directly to it. You can tell that people are <laughs> are getting to that point where they know everyone's going to take that off. Oh yeah. yeah. So let's make that part out of the cheapest yeah. possible materials we can and get away with it legally. Look at the size of those brakes, too. Good God! Yeah, <laughs> they take up the entire front wheel. Yeah, that's that's amazing. Mm. All right, y'all ready for the price? Uh, yeah. Shit. Would y'all think that it's cheaper? Or, I'm or almost, more expensive than the live wire. I'm gonna say twenty two. With it being, let's Italian. go. Price is right. Rules. You say twenty two. Even twenty two k. What's what's the the shit wire? Thirty. Thirty. Twenty nine 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 nine. Whatever. I would say twenty five. Ken is closest. It's twenty two one fifty. Nice. Honestly, that's a that's, solid fucking price for that range. Two hundred plus dude. mile range. That's that for that good looking of a bike. What's a zero to sixty? Oh fast. shit! Say? No, probably. Fast I mean, as probably shit. fast as fuck. Yeah, quick. It's very very faster quick. than you need it to be. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, I, I'm I'm on the right website here. Let's see if I can that find gray it with the black frame just so okay calls to me. Riddle me this, Batman. How is it that an Italian company who is importing these bikes to the states i've never fucking heard this name well i get that but they're they're big over in europe but it's an italian electronic or electric sport bike being imported into the united states has better specs all around and it's what nine grand cheaper yeah than the harley that's being produced in America and doesn't have to be shipped across the Atlantic Ocean. Yeah. See, Harley, you fucked up. A big yeah. Okay, I'm sorry. So uh, one other, no. one other. I'm not sorry. <laughs> so sorry, the sorry. Uh, batteries are warranted for thirty-one thousand miles, or twelve thousand cycles, whichever comes first. So don't sit there and play with your switch. <laughs> Your kid gets out there and he's like, click, 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 click. <laughs> no. I can't find the zero to 60. I'm sure it's fast as fuck, though. You know, so 31,000 miles, that. How much of the battery, see, would. That would be the big part. Yeah, but 31,000 miles for an electric bike? For, for some people, that's not a lot. Yeah, but for people who ride 10,000 miles a year are not going to be buying an electric bike. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> so when you're getting 250 miles to the charge, you're getting some reasonable travel distance out of that. I mean, at least in Texas, if you're traveling the, the I-35 corridor, you know, there's plenty of charging places along the way. That's true. Yeah. But again, your your higher mileage riders aren't typically riding that style of bike anyways. But, I mean, you know, like you look in, like, California. Yeah. They have great wide riding weather all year long. Sure. And, of course, they get incentives, tax incentives, to buy electric vehicles. Correct. Uh, so, and like you said, when you were in San Francisco, you saw electric motorcycles all over the fucking yeah. place. So, you know, if you're using that as a daily commuter because the weather permits it. Sure. 31,000 miles. Well, that's... That's a few I years. I mean, you're looking at three years. 
that's a three year warranty. That's more than Harley's doing. Yeah, Harley gives you two years. I'd say that's not how long that they're saying it's going to last. That's how long they're warranting the yeah. battery for yeah. the battery. Correct. Yeah. yeah. Which honestly, though, that's I'm okay that's, with that's that. about seems, right. I'm okay with seems that. Seems average. So it just you know, my my of course my question would be is how much would it co- have cost me to have to replace that battery after yeah. that three year mark? But I found your answer zero to sixty in three seconds. <sighs> so top speed it. limited at one twenty five. Limited, which means that can be changed. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> so, so another <clears throat> another bike on the market that beats the live wire in pretty much every category. Yeah. It this one I even say beats it in the looks. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I'm usually putting live wire above a lot of the the bikes in the looks category. No, that one looked really mm. great. I think that one looks better. <laughs> okay, my third bike is the 2020 Yamaha MT09. Oh, I still want to ride one of these. And it nothing's changed on it. It's still an 850 cc. It still has the slipper clutch. Everything else is the exact same as last year, except for the color. Now I've been a fan of the F- FZs and the MTs for years, and I have to admit I like the MT09 more than the MT10 from a looks perspective. I know it doesn't have the same performance as the 10. However, yeah. there's enough power on the MT09. You're not losing for me anything. to have a blast with. The FZO or MT07 has enough power for yeah, you to have a blast with. You're not <laughs> losing anything there. Um, but these things are like eight grand. Yeah, stupid cheap. So the MT07 is even cheaper. You can find used MT07s, probably still called FZs, for five to six. Yeah. So again, I they this year they do have a white model that has the orange accents. So like the MT09 or M09 or whatever it is, the the emblem, the moniker is orange. The wheels are orange. I don't like this one that you have on the screen because that red is is off. Is that red? I, I thought that was orange. I thought That's, it was orange. It's red. They had it at IMS. It's it's mm. it's kind of parked right there between red and orange. That's why it looks so orange. Okay. Uh, I wish they would have gone one way or the other with it, but so it's orange. It's orange. it's orange. Yeah, yeah. it's. It's almost like a highlighter red orange. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you though, <laughs> orange. I would go back to the FZ07 that had the gray paint and the hyper yellow, yes. neon yes. yellow. That is that color scheme is so sexy. So cool. oh, it's awesome. But I, but look though, they're still continuing with a similar style. Oh, for sure. Yeah. So they know where their roots are. I would take this and whatever is this orange color, change it to a like a a hyper mint blue. Oh yes. Yep. Oh, that would look just good. The Subaru, God, they need that, that someone Subaru needs to hire blue, me. The Subaru blue or the 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 like tundra, the tundra blue. blue. Yes. Mm-hmm. Or maybe even go back to like the Mustang Grabber electric blue. Mm. Mm. Napa Auto Parts blue. <laughs> <laughs> um, that and Lowe's blue. Lowe's blue. Lowe's. <laughs> I, the Ryan Newman edition. <laughs> <laughs> Is that, okay. is that who drives for Lowe's? I, I, I don't know if I can know. <laughs> I just threw but, it. I, but I know who he is. Okay. <laughs> okay. So no new news for that one. So let's go back to Ken. Let's hear about your final pick for 2020 bike you are talking about. I'm not going to say you're excited about. I mean, I'm kind of excited about it because I've always really liked this motorcycle. Okay. I'm a little salty that I didn't get invited to go ride this one because a lot of other smaller moto bloggers did. Oh, really? Yeah. A lot okay. of females, so oh. yeah. well, I wonder why. Yeah, so I got B cups. I don't know why. Ain't nothing, no shame in that. But you're not so, pretty. <laughs> hey, <laughs> you're handsome, but you're not pretty. <laughs> Throw some lipstick on him. So what I what we're all talking about is the new Triumph Rocket, and it's they a good looking bike. Man. <laughs> and for those of you who don't know, the Triumph Rocket is an absolute fucking rocket. Yeah. yeah. All right. <laughs> So this one comes in at 29,000 MSRP, which, yes, that's a lot. Well, wait. <laughs> but this is the Rocket <laughs> 3 Special Edition R. that's $30,000. Yeah. That's it, not the standard. Yeah, that's the TFC. Yeah, that's like their, their CBO. Yeah. Yeah, the Rocket. They're only making 750 of those. Yeah. 225 for the U.S. Yeah, correct. Yeah. But the Rocket's are just that they're fucking rockets they look fucking cool 
That displacement. I love. <laughs> yeah. So, okay. So, the displacement. What size engine does it have? 2,458 cc's. So, bigger than like every single Honda car. It's, it's the <laughs> largest. It is the largest production motorcycle engine in the world. Yeah. And, and it's coming out of a country, because Triumph is Britain, right? Yes. Yeah. So it's coming out of a country that they don't even have roads long enough to actually enjoy to, that. To stretch that thing out? No way. <laughs> I no mean, the, the M1 or way. the A1 for small spurts between roundabouts. Um, yeah. So some, so some numbers on it. It's said to have 163 pounds of torque <laughs> at 4,000 RPMs. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> God. And, and, it, and 165 crankshaft horsepower. So they go ahead and tell you right off the bat, 165 crank horsepower. Respect to them. All right. And you're, so, it's, so it says here, it says peak torque is achieved at 4,000 RPMs while max power is hit at 6,000 RPMs on the way to the engine's rev limiter of 7,000 RPMs. Yeah, so that... that that 165 whatever it was is right in the middle of the rpms yeah yeah <laughs> jesus well it's a triple so i mean it, yeah. it's got to have torque everywhere you know so some of the features, keyless ignition which you know which you know becoming more and more popular oh, uh that is it, just sexy it also has the hill hold control okay uh and the bike comes in at a wet weight of about 650 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Wow. To, to be fair, <laughs> to be fair, three quarters of that is engine. Oh, it's like. <laughs> well, I'm saying that's lighter than my fat bob. <laughs> yeah. With 60% more horsepower <laughs> and double the motor. Yeah. God. So 2,500 cc's liquid cool. Okay. 50% more motor. Uh, <laughs> throttle by wire. Hydraulic clutch, six speed. I mean, it's got Showa uh, rear suspension and Showa front inch, front suspension. It's just there's so much motorcycle there. Like I want to ride it, but I'm kind of scared of it. Like, because you'll want it. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I mean, now this is the same bike that Shade Tree. Used he, to have. He, he has an older it, one. It's but, the prettier sister. Yeah. But yes, it's the prettier little little sister. That okay, so weird, something kind that. of bothers me though. <laughs> With this fucking bike, how does he not enjoy canyon carving? Okay, well, okay. I mean, he, he lives in, in Florida. Florida. Yeah, there's <laughs> the only canyons are the sinkholes, but but still, that kind of bike just screams, "Take me on the twisties," and just fuck around i don't know what this says about this bike or what it says about roadblock but when you get an ad for lease the new bentley gtz gtc at only three thousand thirty nine dollars a month a month either fuck you roadblock or fuck triumph <laughs> <laughs> it's targeted ads man i, I think so yeah <laughs> ads well done <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough, <laughs> Except I'm in private browsing, so that is not because of my browsing history. Oh, okay. I don't see the little the little man up here. I don't think you're in private browsing, sir. Trust oh. me, I know what the private browsing window <laughs> looks like. Is this oh. a Miss Bird can't find what you look at? <laughs> oh, shit. I'm not on You're private. not in private browsing. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. I see your face is right there, motherfucker. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> I, I so, do not price Bentleys. So like that, Ashton you know, Martins, yes. extra yes. options, your shift assist uh, for clutchless up and down shifting, integrated like GoPro control system. Oh, God, we've discussed so, this before. So, you know, if you're into that, you know, or maybe if you just want to run it as a dash cam, which I know a lot of people do, eh, it, it, it is what it is. It's got Bluetooth connectivity, TPMS. Google navigation, tire pressure monitoring system. That's pretty cool. Uh, and f more than 50 new accessories for the Rocket 3, including aluminum saddlebags. Aluminium. So, yeah, I mean. It's cool. It's got a lot of accessories, you know, to obviously make meet the needs that you want it for other than going fast as fuck. <laughs> oh, it looks fun. Oh, yeah. I definitely don't want to ride that. I've always, I've, ever since I started watching Shade, Shade Tree, 
I've always wanted to ride one. Yeah. And same. his and his the way he styled his is just so great. Yeah, it was him and then there's um I can't remember the guy's name up in Austin that Moto Nasi and the other guy I used to hang out with. Hunter had Honda. One. It was Hunter, but then the the guy, the European guy oh. had one. Oh. Um, God, I can't remember his name. But he had it at one of the, the Texas Moto mm-hmm. Meets. And his has a little bit of work done to it too, so it, mm-hmm. it looks and sounds even better. But yeah, ever since I've seen him in person, I'm like, fuck I want to ride one. <laughs> Okay, so this is the the regular Rocket Three starts at around twenty. Around 20. That's a lot more manageable, but still, even the, it's just oh, it's so much engine. Yeah, yeah. So th- that was mine. I love the Rockets. One of these days, I'm going to ride one. <laughs> I love, okay, I, I say, love the quote here. <laughs> it will perform several leagues above while looking far more dashing than its agricultural ish predecessor. <laughs> <laughs> Dashing and ish. There you go. <laughs> okay. So, now that we've kind of recapped eight bikes, because you and I had the same, because great minds think alike. Yep. The closing argument. Which one of these will you ride first? Who will I ride first? Hmm. I mean, that's just depending on the opportunity. Opportunity, I could see us probably getting our hands on an MT fairly easily. Yeah, Yamaha has ride days. Uh, I don't foresee us getting a test ride a, a rocket unless somebody has one who happens to show up where we're at. <laughs> yeah. And knows who we are and is willing to let us take swap for a bikes. spin. <laughs> yeah. They would have to be a bike swap. Yeah, type yeah. of thing. They they're gonna want their insurance policy. <laughs> <laughs> you have a thirty thousand dollar road glide. Okay, I'll let you test ride my twenty thousand dollar rocket through. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I, I see the MT being pretty easy. Maybe the uh, maybe the Ninja. Mm. Depending on when it comes to the market. Yeah, yeah. If if that if this particular one does hit the states, they say it will. But you know. Yeah. So fuck your closing argument. Which one of these would you be most likely to buy? Oh, you're such a dick. <laughs> Man. So if I had the money to throw down on any of these, I really lean towards that, uh, the Electra Gica. Energica? Energica. Yeah, it's a good look. I, I really, that one or the uh, the Vitpilin. Yep, that's where my money would go, that Husky. I'm, I'm telling you, I think because I know they're not selling well, and I know that you can oh, find you them for like sixty five hundred. Yeah, there's no marketing behind it. I mean, I've never none. even heard of it. Yeah, when I saw it in the dealership floor, was the first time I'd ever seen it. I ah. mean, it's a sexy bike for a sexy price. Yeah, I, I think that's the best bang for the buck bike on our list, and the horsepower to weight. Yeah, the, yeah, the power to weight ratio. The power to weight ratio is phenomenal. It's pretty stupid, but okay. Look, and it's Husqvarna, so it's a solid name. Oh yeah. Whereas Huskies I've never heard of Energica, shit. which is made in Italy. Never seen one here in the states. Yeah, I'm less concerned about that part of it because they do have a decent heritage. I just worry Italy. about the service. Yeah, that's what I'm that, worried about. Yeah, I could see that. But yeah, I'm right there with you. The Vitpilin. And it's gas, so Yeah, I don't have to worry about charging. Yep. And I don't really care about the environment. I mean, I'll be dead before it's No, it's it's beyond my problem now. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll call uh, you guys. As I drink out of my styrofoam cup here. <laughs> uh but yeah, I'm I'm right there with you. This is this is my favorite bike on the list. I and I never heard of it. So that that's even better. So uh, we have links to these in the show notes. So head over to betweentwowheels.com. The two is spelled out T-W-O. Click on those show notes and choose the link for EP65. Thank you for tuning in to Between Two Wheels podcast. To see the show notes for this and all of our episodes, to find links to our social media and Patreon page where we are raising money for Project Clean Slate, head over to our website at www.betweentwowheels.com the two is spelled out T-W-O on behalf of Justin Uncle Ken I am Johnny Roblox saying be yourself unless you're a jerk then be someone better peace
I, I, I'll be dead, dude. I like, I like that.